Welcome to the July 24th, 2020 video version of the Wagner Daily. My name is Rick Petticelli. As usual, we're going to run through a few broad market averages, then cover current open positions in the model portfolio, and then we'll finish with uh, some setups on our watch list, what we're looking at over the next few days. So to the NASDAQ. Uh, the Nasdaq sold off about 2.3% uh, on a pickup in volume. The higher volume is a distribution day, and this was the second distribution day in three days. So the distribution is beginning to cluster. That is a negative sign. And is the third distribution day of the past two weeks. It looks like the Nasdaq has still yet to recover from the 713 distribution day, which was a nasty uh, gap up failure and uh, sell off and uh, why I say that is because the price action rallied back into that high and then stalled on a pickup in volume but also the price failed to really sell off beneath the low of 713 as it it did on 714 and then it held on 716 so it looks like the price action is simply range bound here and as long as the distribution days don't begin to to pile up here the chop should be considered to be healthy as it would digest a pretty strong advance over several months and the 20-day EMA which has provided support during the entire rally even if it breaks here there would be support from the 10-week moving average which possibly be around this 10,100 area so it would be about a three and a half percent to four percent dip to touch the the 10 week and let me see where would that be around the 50 about four and a half on the 50 almost five depending on when it touches if it were to break down so and that would take the price about seven to eight percent off the high so during an uptrend we have these normal two to five percent pullbacks and then you have a little bit bigger pullback which would be a seven to ten percent and in that type of environment, we have leading stocks possibly base out for a few weeks and form a flat base uh, to digest recent gains. In the S&P 500, it's not a leading index, so it doesn't factor into as, uh, our analysis as much, uh, especially since it is still above the 20-day EMA. Now, if the S&P were to break down below the 50-day EMA, and uh, begin to set lower highs and lower lows that would be an issue on to open positions in the model portfolio we start with zs which uh, reversed off the highs of the day which is fine the market did as well uh, there was a pickup in volume but the volume but the volume was not excessive uh, we could see the price just pull back into the 20-day ema chop around in here and then take off again CHGG we bought above the well we added to our position above the three-day high here it looked like it was working out earlier and then reversed and took us out with a stop beneath the low of 722 it was a four percent loss on a very small three percent position so uh, not not a big loss we still have a small three percent position left and uh, as long as it holds above the 20-day EMA and continues to set higher lows, we're going to stick with the trade. Okta, pretty ugly reversal. Uh, volume did pick up a bit, but was still well below average. When we bought Okta on a pullback, we were looking at this bullish reversal candle on 714 that touched the 10-week moving average. And this was the first touch of the 10-week after about a... 70% uh, rally from the 10-week MA. The low of 714 had a pretty good chance of holding up, especially with the 50-day MA now above the low of 714. So although we like the price action to hold the 20 here, it's possible that it may dip around to the 200 area and then reverse back up and just chop around in this area until it's ready to move higher. Earnings are not until late August, so we have some time here. CRWD, we have a stop here at the lows that held up just barely. And um, it, you know, looking at the weekly chart, it looks like it may have to touch this 10 week MA. Whether it touches the 10 or 50 day MA 
and then bounces higher or we get a lucky bounce prior I don't know but uh, this is our stop and if it stops us out that's fine uh, maybe we'll see some sort of uh, reversal off the 50 where we can re-enter Twillow two stalls at 270 uh, we're in for much lower we're up about 29 percent uh, has earnings on 8.4 so we'll continue to hold here and we'll also likely hold through earnings report net I believe we also have a stop around the lows here so whether or not this is able to put in higher lows and continue to work its way higher over the next few weeks or it needs to undercut the 50 we don't know but our stops in place we'll have to see what happens and PAAS we raise a stop due to the recent heavy volume selling uh, looking to capture at least a 10% gain however if you wanted to be more patient you could set your stop for, uh, beneath the 20 day EMA looking for a close below the 20 as a sell uh, we did stop out of Lulu on Thursday per intraday email alert uh, our initial buy was on this pullback here on Wednesday around 327 we added to the position over th the high uh, ran about close to 2% higher and then reverse we sent out intraday alerts to exit around uh, 325 and 320 and we didn't like the way the price action ran to a new high and then reverse so it's a, uh, an ugly reversal on a pickup in volume so we felt it was best to just exit the position and, and uh, wait and see what happens over the next few days we might even be able to get a lower entry and this would also allow us to see how the market reacts to today's distribution so uh, we limited our losses with both exits were under two percent i believe so it was a pretty small loss um with z we also purchased on a breakout yesterday and we bought knowing that this was an extended entry but we were willing to take a shot to see if it can punch through 68 level and hold earlier in the day with many stocks looking pretty good during the morning session so we thought it had a chance to work out the market reversed lower uh, z reversed lower on a pickup in volume we sold uh, with a four percent loss so it was a less than average loss um probably almost uh two-thirds of an average loss so like Lulu, we'll have to see what happens during the next few days. We might be able to get a, a, a decent uh, pullback entry, or we might just have to simply lay off new entries for a week or two, depending on the price and uh, volume action in current open positions and leadership stocks and the market. And we also sold CMG per intraday alert. Um, it did report earnings. And there was a negative reaction to earnings on a big pickup in volume, bigger than bigger than any up volume day during the rally. So we decided to exit the position on a bounce intraday for about an 8% gain. As far as what's on our watch list, well, what we're looking at over the next few days, uh, we'll be looking at a possible break of a downtrend line entry in ZM or ZI, I'm sorry, Zoom Info. This is a little bit off the radar here uh, this is a, a recent IPO that's um, pulled back to where it opened up initially on 6.4 so we'd like to see if it can hold this area and push higher uh, ZM we'd like to see if it can hold the 20-day EMA or possibly do some sort of a dip below support here around uh, 2.30 235 area and then push back up and then break out to the upside here so that's on the watch list DXCM we're also monitoring but uh, with earnings on 728 it's a bit too late to enter but hopefully we could see some sort of gap up to new highs post earnings and that would be a clear buy entry B-I-L-L, Bill.com Holdings. This is the cup, and here's the handle. It's a bit deep for a handle, but if you can break this uh, downtrend line, could be in play for partial size, and then add as it moves through this 90, and once again through 95. Roku still on the watch list. Uh, obviously has to punch through 160 and hold. And some of the bigger cap leaders like uh, PayPal, 
It also stalled at the prior high here. Maybe needs to chop around for a week or two, and that would also allow the 10-week moving average to catch up. And if the price were to reverse off the 50 MA, could offer an entry point. So we're also going to have to keep an eye on, on how some of these leaders react off the 50 or 10-week. Uh, we'll look for bullish reversal action such as a, a bullish hammer or an engulfing candle as buy signals. And let's take a look at a few of the FANG stocks. We have Apple, which broke the 20 EMA on volume, which suggests that this uptrend is in danger of turning into a uh, chop mode. So if the price were to break down beneath the 20, uh, yesterday's low, that would increase the odds of a few weeks of chop. We have Amazon still holding above the 20 day EMA, but this nasty candle off the highs still in control and it uh, uh, stalled at the prior high as well. So even though it's yet to break the 20, it looks like it's already in chop mode. Netflix, again, another nasty candle on 713 and now it's trading below the 20 day EMA. So it's also been in chop mode for two weeks now. I think Apple is important here to note because it was the one stock that uh, was holding up better than the NASDAQ and it did flash a sell signal today while standby sell signal needs to confirm with uh, lower action tomorrow. So just a quick recap here. The NASDAQ uh, distribution days are beginning to mount, which is a negative sign. We'll have to see if money continues to flow into S&P stocks, uh, construction, uh, gold and silver. Uh, we're looking at Apple to see if that follows through to the downside for further confirmation. Also, we're looking to the NASDAQ composite to see if it can hold the 20-day EMA or does it break down below the 20-day EMA and then need to test the 50 EMA. And then we'll be looking at leading stocks. Uh, do they hold the 20-day EMA? Uh, the Octas, the CHGG, ZS, uh, Net, D-Dog, Tesla, all those stocks. We'll have to see what happens there as well. All right, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next Thursday night.